everyone, welcome to SNA 2023, the Soros Navy Association National Symposium held in Crystal City, just outside Washington, D.C. In this day one video, we are focusing on Thales and its Captas 4 viral dev sonar, which is uh, selected for the U.S. Navy's Constellation class frigate. Lockheed Martin, who's showcasing for the first time a Patriot Pack 3 MSC missile shooting out of a Mark 41 vertical launch system. Last but not least, we're talking to L3 Aris regarding their spare next generation EOIR system. We are now on the Thales booth here at SNA 2023 to discuss Captas 4 Viable Death Sonar with uh, Thales and uh, Mark Bog. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, glad to be here. So you're the Vice President of Strategy at AAC. Uh, first, can you please tell us about the relationship between AAC and, and Thales here in the US? Uh, AAC is a business, business unit within Thales, uh, uh, TDSI USA, um, as such a wholly owned subsidiary of Thales. They're our owner. Mm -hmm. And uh, so can you confirm to us that Thales is under contract with the U.S. Navy or Fincan Thierry to provide CAPTAS-4 sonars to the future frigates? Well, to be specific, Advanced Acoustic Concepts as a U.S. entity, uh, fully uh, under full proxy agreement with the U.S. government, is under contract with Fincan Thierry to deliver the uh, CAPTAS-4 system uh, for the FFG-62 frigate. Uh, we received the contract uh, early last year. I don't know, the, don't remember the exact date, but in the March time frame. And the contract is for how many uh, sonar sets? The contract is an agreement uh, to participate in procurement of 10 systems. Uh, we're under contract for two of them. They're each of them being options to the primary contract. And then you expect follow-on contracts for the remaining of the fleet? Uh, Fincan Terry has been a wonderful partner to us and we're integral to the design process of the platform. And as such, uh, we expect that they will entertain uh, us favorably in the future systems, yes. Uh, in your opinion, why was the CAPTAS-4 selected? The main reason is that the Navy had, and Fincan Terry had trust in the fact that it was a very mature system. Uh, that it was already designed, developed, and uh, and had initial operational capability in, in for the foreign navies. Um, as such, the U.S. government uh, navies have worked together in a variety of ASW exercises, which proved fruitful. Uh, the system performed well, and uh, as such, uh, it gained confidence uh, by the U.S. Navy to be a part of their fleet. And so we were chosen by Fincan Terry in their bid for the FFG-62 as part of that team uh, and fortunately uh, we were selected. We are being counted on to deliver the systems on time for the construction uh, process for FFG-62 uh, and the system um, uh, needs to be fully functional at the same rate and time that the FFGs are fully functional. So our, our main task and our full focus right now is on making sure that that system is ready to uh, be installed on uh, deployed on and worked the very first time on the FFG-62. Thales shared with us a video showing uh, the Constellation class frigate, the future frigate of the US Navy, deploying the CAPTAS-4 sonar and tracking submarines with it. The animation is showing the frigate sailing in the high seas, so that's FFG-62, the first in class uh, Constellation frigate. And at the stern, of course, you see the CAPTAS-4 via the sonar, here it is being deployed. You see the heavy duty uh, handling system. It's coming out of the hull and uh, it's going to be released on the water and then underwater. And you can see the, the, the cable for the transmission of the data is being reeled down. That's the sonar underwater. It is uh, transmitting and the sonar waves are detecting, detecting uh, potential uh, enemy submarines. The frigate is deploying an MH-60 Romeo uh, maritime helicopter. Those helicopters are fitted with the ALFS or flash dipping sonar, a product also uh, designed and produced by Thales. So here the dipping sonar is deployed in the water. The transmitters are going to deploy from the sonar and it's going to transmit. And this shows that uh, the two systems can conduct multi-static uh, anti-submarine warfare. 
Here you see the various uh, navies customer of the Captas 4 sonar. So I believe there are eight customers in total. And these are all the classes of ships fitted with the Captas 4 to date. So of course the frame frigates, uh, the Type 23 frigate, the future FDI frigate of France and Greece, and of course the FFG 62 Constellation class frigate. Lockheed Martin is showcasing for the first time this Pike 3 MSC being launched from a Mark 41 vertical launch system. Tom, good morning. Thanks for welcoming us on your booth. Oh, thanks, Xavier. Good to see you again. Great to see you indeed. Uh, so wh what are you showcasing here? So what you see here is a is the, the, the front half of a Pac-3 MSE missile, which is an Army missile program record, uh, been in full rate production since 2016. And we're depicting it being modified to be launched from a Mark 41 VLS system, which is present in all the, the, the Navy's surface combatant fleet. It fills some capability and capacity gaps that the Navy currently has with their with their program or record Mark 41 uh, missiles. Where are you at today in terms of uh, integration? So integration, um, it has, the PAC-3 MSE missile has been integrated with the Aegis Ashore baseline at a Pacific Missile Range facility and they've done, the Missile Defense Agency is, we've gone all the way up to hardware in the loop test for missile to test missile communications and and the combat system that's been successful and the next step uh, is a potential live fire from PMRF um, there's been a separate effort by the strategic capabilities office to also integrate and test it with the expeditionary weapon system which is a mark 41 based launcher that also has done hardware in the loop to test the concept but they have not done a live fire so and for, for the Navy, the idea is to be able to launch uh, Pac-3 MSC from DDGs and frigates. DDGs and frigates, yeah, that would be any or you know any ship that's equipped with a Mark 41 VLS launch system, um, and it could be adapted to the DDG 1000s fairly easily too. Once you make that step with the integration with the Aegis combat system and in, in the Mark 41 launcher. now with L3 RS, we are showcasing for the first time the new SPARE system, a next generation EOIR system. Thank you, Xavier. It's a pleasure to be here. We're very excited to talk about the SPEAR program. Uh, it's been a long haul to uh, develop this product and, and win the program as we did in April of last year. We're very proud to be supporting the Navy and giving them more options to be able to passively uh, protect their ships. As the, you know, the SPEAR name is a Shipboard Passive. Uh, EOIR system. So basically it's a concept where you could turn off your radars yet still provide surveillance and protection for the ship by detecting things optically versus with a RF uh, signal from a radar. So the, the main systems are right behind me, starting with this wide field of view camera system that surveils the, the space in a hemisphere around a, a, a surface vessel, usually large ships for this kind of systems, in both the infrared spectrum as well as the color or daytime uh, sensors. Uh, so to be able to detect uh, targets uh, like, like incoming aircraft or uh, missiles or small UAS, large UAS, it has the ability to do uh, parasite detection or even in a uh, search and rescue person of water scenario where you had to find a person of water. Aside from the wide field of view system and the narrow field of system to my left, we have a, a significant image processing and tracking system that goes below deck uh, that is making decisions on various targets by calculating uh, uh, whether or not they're a threat to the ship and then the uh, gives the uh, ship uh, opportunity to make some decisions about what to do about that threat. Would you say it can replace uh, radar systems? Uh, in some scenarios that's exactly what it's designed for. So you can be passive in a higher threat environment without turning on your radars which uh, creates a signal that could be detected by uh, a threatening force and thus make you a target. So we're about uh, eight months into the program. We're still in the development phase and working with the Navy to uh, design in certain requirements for the program. Uh, we'll, we'll have some uh, uh, both uh, preliminary design reviews and, uh, and critical design reviews uh, later this year. Uh, and it's a roughly three or three and a half year uh, program uh, where we, we expect to field some uh, developmental systems at the end of the program.
And of course, our, our SPEAR program was built on a long legacy of great uh, uh, camera systems that have been supplied to the Navy for on a 20 year program of record. Jeremy is our specialist in a Mark 20. Yeah, so the Mark 20 is the narrow field sensor system that has been on the United States Navy ship since 1992. So we've got a 30 year program of record providing the uh, guidance system for the main gun on cruisers and destroyers. This system will also be on the frigate as well as the lethality and sustainability upgrades for the littoral combat ship. So what we did at L3 Harris was we built on that 30 year legacy of the Mark 20 as a gun weapons director. We spiral developed that technology into a new version, uh, about a generation eight of the Mark 20 family of systems, which will now serve as the narrow field sensor system for the SPEAR program of record.